All right, everybody, wanted to talk to you guys today about Dungeonborn. Now, this is uh, one of the newest in this genre of games, but it is a type of game that I have seen more and more frequently on Steam. It really borrows a lot from Dark and Darker, and if you're not familiar with Dark and Darker, don't worry about it, because that's what I'm here for, is to teach you all about these dungeon crawling games, because... The world needs more multiplayer Skyrim. That's probably the easiest and best way I could say it, and that hopefully got your attention. This game pits you in a timed dungeon against other players and enemies. Everything you bring into the dungeon with you is the best equipment that you hopefully have at the time. However, if you die, you lose it. So it's a risk reward system of how much equipment do you want to go in to be successful? And then when you're in the dungeon, how much loot do you want to take out? Do you want to leave immediately? Do you want to go deeper into the dungeon and find even better treasures and fight harder monsters? Keeping in mind that there are other players out there who are probably going to try to kill you on sight. The enemies get more difficult as time goes on. And eventually with um, all the maps, you have to exfil in a very quick amount of time as well. So there's a lot going on here, but at its core, it's a first person medieval combative game and it is tons and tons and tons of fun. I've really been enjoying it. I wanted to show you guys quickly the characters that you can play from because there are quite a few. Um, they are based heavily on kind of their default tropes in terms of like um, if you've ever read old school like Dungeons and Dragons books or if you've ever played any kind of generic um, medieval game, you're going to recognize a lot of about uh, what I'm about to show you. Um, every character has a nice little set of pros and cons listed here. There's also a male and female variant. And then you'll notice that each of them have skills, both active skills and passive skills that you unlock over time with their various statistics. So you have a fighter, you have a priest, you have a rogue, a pyromancer, which is actually a lot of fun, especially with these uh, mage skills. And I want you to notice too, I know I've been clicking through quickly, but the it would make sense that a caster is going to have a ridiculous amount of intelligence, for example, which increases the elemental damage but they may have significantly less strength than another character. But this is where it gets fun. You could play as a Death Knight that actually looks like a freaking skeleton. That's the character that I'm gonna be playing through with you here today. Um, you also have a uh, Cryomancer, which uh, again, awesome. And then you have um, two new ones, the Swordmaster and the Druid. Now, the nice thing is this is a free to play game, but you get lots of character slots right off the bat. Some of the competitors in this don't offer that. You have to do a lot more microtransaction-y stuff to unlock more characters. So I think this is why so many people have gravitated to this game, even though it is still in very much early access. Um, after each dungeon run, you um, can go and start to dismantle pieces of equipment that you had previously had, and you can buy this heirloom gear, which allows you to start off with a little bit better gear going in by having um, a, a sword, for example, that's already like decent. As you, you know, this has a better attack level than, say, the standard sword. Actually, I don't know if I have one. Than the, like the standard sword, for example, with the zero attack level, this has a little bit better. So each run after you collect all your loot, you go back to this guy and you can build nice custom armor. They also offer uh, the ability to buy more potions and bandages. We'll talk about those obviously when we play, but those are pretty self-explanatory. And there's just the generic merchant for all the treasures you get as you begin to sell things um, to buy better pieces of gear and equipment. And again, if you save up for this 27,000 gold sword and you walk into the dungeon and you die to the very first enemy, well, guess what? You lost it. Um, you can, uh, when you're not in a dungeon though, you can go into your personal stash and you can drag some of the pieces of gear over. So for example, I have this really nice shield that I am not going to be bringing with me in combat. Um, I also have some other small items that I'm going to, um, pull out of my inventory so that, um, 
I'm not wasting them, but you could see I've gone through a few runs already. I've gotten a little bit better gear, nothing overly exciting. Um, additionally, you can, um, you know, you can go on the market, so to speak. And this is like an online auction house. You can trade with other people. You just exactly like how your auctions work. You can make bids and sell stuff. You get a percentage of that. Um, they do offer a microtransaction store with some limited cosmetics now. And then you get a list of quests that you partake on. Each quest will give you a little bit of crafting material and some gold. There are daily, weekly, and seasonal quests as well. So if you start really getting into the game, well, you're going to be able to have a lot of fun doing that. But I think the best way to kind of walk you through the game is to play a match together. Um, when you start, you can select in parties of one or three. Um, I am playing solo here. Um, but you can, if it, you're probably best off going in a party with uh, some of your friends. So uh, I play with my buddies, Kev, Matt, Wes. If there's three of us on, we'll, we'll jump into a dungeon. We all play different characters, so there's definitely better synergies there. However, if you want to go solo, it's punishing, but you can absolutely do that. And that's what we're going to try to do here today. But like I said, seeing is believing. Uh, you'll notice right away when I start, you can see the map in the upper corner there. Um, you can additionally see that we have 15 minutes to get out. 15 minutes, that's it. And you can see the map, uh, pretty complex. There are blue portals, which are static portals in which we can leave immediately. There are other icons indicating um, different uh, shrines or distinct enemies that drop better loot. Um, so you have a couple nice things there to switch through. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick with my long sword. Actually, because it's probably a little dark. Let's go ahead and pull out my torch for you guys so you could see that a little bit. We could walk around a little bit. Um, a lot of stuff is lootable here, like I said. Um, like this treasure chest right here just happens to be right next to us. How nice is that? Go and open the treasure chest and inside is um, some stuff that I can't wear, but I'll go ahead and take it for now because I'm a klepto. And why not? So I'll go ahead and grab those. You'll notice the frame rate does drop off quite a bit. I was at 60 frames a second and then I opened the chest, which should be like one of the lowest honest like things in the game. And I dropped to 30 frames a second, which is kind of aggravating. Um, they're working on that. They know there's some issues with this game and some limitations of what the game can do. Again, it's in early access and it's free to play. So I'm not overly critical of it right now and demanding they do more. Um, I'm just happy that it exists. Now, um, I do have, you can see the world here. There are other, other enemies down there. There's a pack of enemies guarding that shrine over there. looks like there's a treasure chest here that uh, is suspended in the air. And then you may hear or see other players walking around. I'm gonna try my best not to engage with other players. Unfortunately, this game, people like to attack on sight, on first sight, which is a little aggravating. Um, there's definitely, I think there's supposed to be a, maybe a little more camaraderie here. We're not actually getting it yet. <laughs> um, I am not able to hit this bat. There we go. And there's a ghost there. You can see I'm already taking some pretty significant damage. I am going to have to heal up, actually. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use a bandage on myself. You can see at the bottom there I have two meters as a death knight. One is my healing. That's the left orb. And on the right is my essence, essentially. You'll also see a kill counter on the bottom of the screen as you'll see people slowly getting ganked. <laughs> um, hopefully that's not me. Like I said, we'll see. Uh, the Death Knight does regenerate essence as he kills people. That's why you're seeing these little orbs appear. Um, all enemies are lootable. So as you continue to work your way through and kill various enemies, you will start to find better and better, hopefully better and better pieces of gear that you can equip and use. We'll go ahead and pull my torch back out so we can look. Um, I think this game would work great on console and I, I really hope they consider porting it to console. Um, I think this would be a lot of fun to play, especially in the free-to-play market, like I said, where, you know, the fact that it's kind of like, it's still in its infancy. I mean, there's definitely a lot of optimization they can do here, um, particularly with some of the frame rate issues, like I said, but it is a ton of fun. That is a really creepy looking guy. I'm gonna start wailing on him and try to kill him. I don't know what kind of enemy that is. Whoa. He blew up, there's like fire on the ground. 
I am using my last bandage already. That is how fast I took damage, and that is why this game is, I would say, definitely not recommended uh, solo, but in the sake of good YouTubing, darn it, we're going to get you the best quality stuff we can, and we're just going to venture on. Plus, you probably don't want to hear my annoying comms with my friends as we uh, complain and accuse each other of being poor players. So I'm just kind of working my way through this little area. There's definitely an enemy up there and one down here. I'm gonna see if I can kite her back and pull out. We'll use my other sword now. Now, one of the nice things about the Death Knight is this Death and Decay spell that I put down here, um, which you can see did massive work on her very, very rapidly. It costs a significant amount of resources to cast though. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this on my belt and I'm gonna go ahead, I think I hear footsteps. To my right, I definitely hear footsteps. There's still another guy over there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy over. Actually, I think I could do this from here. There we go. Ghosts are probably hard to see. Um, oh, I'm gonna die. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. I'm drinking this potion and walking away. Oh, look how low my health is. Oh my God, this is so punishing. Trying to get this kill here. There we go. Ooh, that was close. Uh, you'll notice also on the top, um, up right corner, it says escape portals have appeared. So as you play, you'll start to see these blue hues. The escape portals uh, are slowly appearing throughout the world. You have There's one right there. Of course, it's near a ton of enemies. Um, but if you go to escape a portal, you actually have to channel it. After you channel an escape portal, that's what allows you to... Um, I'm going to take another potion. Uh, that's what allows you to leave, obviously. Um, you know, all this great loot you've seen me catch so far, or capture so far, is stuff that um, if I die, I lose forever. My biggest criticism with the game right now is I feel like the time in which to explore a dungeon is far too short. Um, they are meant to be nice small runs. However, I mean, you could see I'm already halfway through my time and I haven't really done a whole lot. I think I've, what, looted maybe two or three rooms at this point and I've killed three enemies. So it's kind of one of these things where like, you kind of have to like haul butt. And I don't mind, I don't mind the timed element to it. I think that's a great touch. Uh, but I could totally see a more casual play of this where you're just kind of taking your time. There's a portal through that door right there. I'm pretty sure I might go back that way. I would like to take my time and explore and um, I could totally even really buy in on a non PVP mode where it's just PVE. But like I said, it does scratch that itch of um, kind of that Skyrim that I think everybody wanted, you know, that that Skyrim mode where you're you know, slowly working your way through and exploring dungeons and, you know, fight, fighting various enemies. I like that. And when you have a full party that does, um, that's definitely a portal. When you're fighting a full, when you're playing with a full party and everybody's working in unison and you have your caster standing in the back and your healer standing in the back and you're kind of being a knight and trying to like fight enemies, it does feel really, really good. Um, and I like that combat is very fluid despite the frame rate, uh, suffering at times. That's definitely something that, like I said, they're going to have to work on. I think I'm hearing a lot of swinging. I think that might be a guy. Yep. He's right here. I'm going to go and turn this fire off. I don't really want to fight anybody right now. He's look, I, I think he's looking at me through the door to my left. I don't really have enough. Um, yeah, here I'm pacing back and forth. I don't know how well you can hear that. Sheath the sword, put his sword back. He probably notices this lantern being out too. Here he comes. Yep. And yeah, we're going to fight. I don't want to fight. Can I just close the door on him? Just close the door and ran away. <laughs> I really don't want to fight people if I can avoid it. Okay. 
Yeah, I figured it was somebody. I was 99% sure he was there almost the entire time looting. Um, we're going to go ahead and see if we can... You know what? That might not be any enemies there. Is this going to drop down? I'm so afraid that I'm just going to get smashed by somebody behind me. Like I said, I just want to leave. Some pretty big minions down there. He's not following me, which is good. Okay. I thought these were enemies. I don't think they are. I'm going to go ahead and use this portal. Oh, boy. I heard a bunch of enemies just pop in. Oh, great. So how, how summoning works. Um, I have to activate the portal. And after I activate the portal, then I can leave. I have to channel the portal for a few minutes. But, of course, there was an ambush here of skull monsters, which I kind of figured there might be. Oh boy. They're still coming. <laughs> okay, very good. Back to summoning the portal. I hear footsteps, definitely. Oh boy, more enemies. They are not stopping. Thankfully, I do have enough to cast my death and decay if I need to. You could see uh, my meters full. The nice, again, going back to the nice thing about the death knight, um, the longer you fight, the more damage you start to do in the sense that your meters you start the more things you kill you get more spirit and that helps i'm gonna go ahead and summon this portal look how long this takes and uh, i can now leave i'm just gonna go ahead and loot very 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 quickly now the other thing that's kind of annoying about this game how the portals work at this point anybody who's around me can just run through the portal so after doing all that hard work if there's some guy like standing next to me he could just jump right in the portal and take all my, just leave, leave me behind. Um, when time runs out, by the way, um, you begin taking really, really, really bad uh, chip damage. Um, pretty sure that was the guy I was fighting. He was a death knight. He was standing there watching me. So he was standing there. I think I might've got hit by a bow. He does have one bolt in his inventory. I'm pretty sure um, he took a shot at me, um, but I was just trying to focus. So he was looking around to kind of see um, now he's going to come over. He can now loot what I left behind. Uh, looks like I left a somewhat of a rare item. Look at that sword though. Boy, would you want to get hit with that thing? Um, but thankfully it was a solo. You could be paired in groups with a solo playing against three people. We'll see if this guy fares better, but since he did hunt me down and take a shot at me, um, I have no remorse for him and I would actually love to see him get ganked. So he's probably walking towards that portal there. You can see that blue hue uh, two rooms down, and he's just kind of hoofing it. Um, thankfully, most enemies do have a relatively short tether. So if you are running through an enemy, you typically won't kite the entire map to you, which is kind of nice. But um, because we're getting close to time, enemy frequency will increase. And um, it's going to have to be something that you have to move soon. I mean, he's taking these these skeletons out in three shots. Uh, he would have absolutely eviscerated me. Although he's super low health and he doesn't have any health potions. Yeah, I feel like I probably could have taken a run at him. I don't know. I'd prefer just to loot and leave, honestly. Just to begin and, and sell and build up my economy. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, but uh, as you could see, he was uh, he was ready to go. So... We'll go ahead and uh, let him finish out his game and we'll go back to the lobby and I will show you guys kind of, you know, the debrief of that, so to speak, right? Um, so because I did successfully leave, I get some experience points. Uh, you can see leveling up does get you passive. So even if a run isn't successful, you're gonna get some experience. It might not be as much as you want, but you will eventually begin to level up. And even if you die, you stay to keep that level, which is nice. What you really lose though, more than anything, is um, that gear that you had, which, um, you know, that's where it really starts to come in handy. As you could see, most of the stuff I got here, um, I got a, a goblet, which I can just sell for money. I got a helmet, which isn't really any better than, I guess it's a little better. This is a zero defense level with 9.5 physical and 13.6 life, so slightly better. Um, I did take my helmet cosmetic off, by the way. You can choose to have it on if you want. I like to have it off. I think it looks cooler to see the skeleton. 
Um, but I got that. I got uh, an, an amulet, which um, I, the current amulet I have is better. And then I got some pieces of armor that I can sell and some potions. Um, <laughs> there's a mimic potion that you could drink to transform into a chest. Uh, that would be phenomenal to basically lay ambush to your enemies. You'll find a lot of potions in here that do really aggravating things that allow you to set up ambush for other players, which does kind of tie into that PvP element. However, like I said, it'd be fun just to have PvP. Um, uh, one thing I should point out is um, you'll notice that right now I do have two different uh, skills that I can select from. Uh, that's based on my level. The The longer I level up my character and the more upgrades that I get, um, like if we go back to the screen here, you could see that there are other things that I will have other skills. Well, actually, I guess he just gets these three right now. Um, I guess the passives is what you're really going to upgrade later on. Um, but you can see I don't really have a lot of that yet either. So that's kind of where it is. Uh, one other thing to point out too, um, they are really trying to promote right now getting um, their Discord up and running and to build up the community more. Um, I think, like I said, this game still being in a very, very like early access stage. There's, like I said, the frame rate is something I've noticed, but they're working on um, trying to improve some of the um, some of the feeling of the game, so to speak. Um, they will get better as time goes on, I'm sure, and they will um, continue to make improvements. But um, if you're interested in this, it's on Steam. It's early access. It's free to play. Um, and I, I have been having a, f a lot of fun with it with the guys. Um, you, and you see, even though it is a little bit challenging, <laughs> um, if you really, really, really wanted to, you could absolutely go into a dungeon and successfully survive, which is really, really cool that it does have some of that survivability like kind of built in. At least you can kind of sort of make it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, stock up and get ready for the next run. Um, it was nice to get a level. It was nice to get some money. It was nice to get some of the uh, better, the uncommon pieces of gear to increase my stash and allowing me to craft better items uh, with the heirloom merchant because now um, if I wanted to go in with better armor, you could see I can, but uh, it's going to start costing me more of the dismantled green, which you probably aren't paying attention, but I only had 72 before. And I have 103 because I dismantled those two pieces of green gear that I got, um, which is good. So I'm happy. It was a good run. It was a lot of fun. Mostly just wanted to throw this video out there and say, hey, you know, if you are looking for something new and exciting and different, uh, the worst thing you could do is install it and it sucks and, and not like it. Um, but um, because they're still working on things and because, you know, they're going to be adding more stuff. Uh, they're competitive, they're doing death matches, they're doing uh, basically preloads where you walk in with random characters already, training rooms, custom games, tons and tons and tons of fun that's here to be had. So do yourself a favor, check it out. I think you will enjoy it. I know I did. Uh, that'll wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.